Not only is this the best fitting breathable face mask on YouTube, it's the best fitting breathable face mask made from a placemat. We don't use any zip ties. All we use is this placemat and some comfort elastic. Check out the new design that I'm gonna show you guys how to do. This is totally adjustable. You can pull this back and forth and adjust this through here and it goes around the neck so that you're able to take the pressure off the ears, off the neck, off of everywhere. I had a big problem with that because everybody was messaging me asking me to make something for around the head to take the pressure off the ears. Well, you know what? I'm not putting anything in my hair to mess with my hair and have to, you know, just one more thing, right? So I came up with this. It's one piece of elastic that's totally adjustable for everyone. If that sounds like something you want to learn how to do, then stick around. Hi friends, Tracy here from the Sewing Channel. Welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome. This mask is really exciting. It's so lightweight, it's made with one piece of material and one big long piece of comfort elastic. These placemats are all quilted. There's three layers to it made out of polyester. Polyester is one of those fabrics that's recommended by the experts. I will take you step by step through the entire process. I know that some of you do have valid concerns about holes in fabric from the needles and quilting does put a lot of holes in fabric. So I went ahead and I tested the placemat up on a clear day up on my window with the sun shining in to see if I could see any holes within the quilting of the placemat. And I videoed it. And as you can see here, I did not. So I feel very comfortable in recommending these placemats as far as that goes. Check this out. So it's on you and then you're like, oh, okay, I'm outside. Just unhook it and just let it hang there right on your neck. It's so lightweight, you can't even feel it. What I like about this instead of those long strings is that it stays upright because it has so much structure to it that it doesn't collapse, it doesn't lay on your shirt. Enough talking already, let's get busy. I decided this time not to make a printable pattern. I wanted my friends on YouTube that don't have access to a printer to be able to make this mask as well. So what I did here was just take a regular piece of paper and fold it in half. And then I folded it in half again, and that's all I did as far as that goes. Now there are a few things I want you to take note on this pattern. The fold line right there is two inches in length. So I just wanted to make sure that you saw that. Now as far as what I'm pointing at there, that is the straight line that comes from that bottom point of the wing up to that top point that you see. And I tried to make them dots the best I could. And what I'm pointing at there is I did one inch increments up from that bottom point. When I measured my mid nose to my chin is 4.25 inches, so four and a quarter inches in length. So that's for reference. Now, if yours ends up being a quarter inch more or half an inch more, then you need to enlarge your mask that much more. Now would be a great time to take a couple screenshots of my diagram so that you'll always have it in your phone that you can reference it. Now, I know I'm no drafting engineer for sure, but I really did try to make this diagram as legible as I possibly could for all my friends on YouTube. So be sure and let me know down in the comments if it was helpful. We're going to get right into today's mask project. You should have your one and only piece cut out. It should look something just like this right here. What you have to decide at this point is, would you like this side to be the front or this side? I decided that I would like this on the outside of my mask and I did fussy cut it a little bit because I wanted that big spray of flowers on the front. 
since I want this side on the front, what I'm going to do is put right sides together. I'm gonna to make sure that everything is even up. And I'm gonna go ahead and clip just a couple clips just to make sure that it doesn't shift because this polyester material sometimes has some slickness to it. Make sure that it's even. And then what I'm going to do is put my stitch length at a very small stitch length, like 1.0 is what I'm going to use in stitch length. As far as the stitch width, I want it pretty high. So I'm gonna go ahead to seven and that's as high as my machine goes. What I'm going to do is start at the top and I'm going to encase that entire curved area into a zigzag stitch. After you've zigzagged that entire curved area, you're gonna go and put a straight stitch right in front of that zigzagged area. So you're gonna put it right in front there. And this is just a normal stitch. Be sure to back stitch. You should have something that looks just like this. That's all encased and that's not coming out. It's not going anywhere. We are going to use our ham, of course. I always make sure that I have my ham ready to go whenever I do a mask project. Now, since this is going to be an exposed seam, so you're just gonna kinda push it how you want it or whichever way it wants to go, really. And then you're going to just take your hot iron right along the curve there. This ham is amazing. <laughs> What the ham does is it actually accentuates that curve and makes it mold in that direction. So I'm just setting the seam there, so to speak. I mean, look at that curve. No need for a zip tie with this one, not at all. The quilting actually pops it out and makes it 3D all on its own. The next step, find the center right there, measure one and a half inches from that center point over this way, and then you're going to mark it with your pencil. Just a little mark where you know that it's there. Now this is the bottom of the mask that I'm talking about right here. Now since the top and the bottom are both the same as far as measurements, you won't have to worry about what is the top and what is the bottom. And then I'm going to go one and a half inches over this way. So you can't really see it, but I have a mark here and I have a mark right here. And that's exactly one and a half inches from that center point. The next step we're going to do, find that mark, which is right here. We're going to fold this wing up to where that mark is. So this is the right side of the fabric, remember. This is the one that's gonna be on the outside. So find that mark, which it's right there. I don't know if you can see it or not. And then I'm going to pinch that. So I kind of pinch that close, and if I were to open that up and look, there's my line. So my line is essentially right in this crease right here. So I'm gonna line these edges up so that that's flush. I'm going to be feeding it into my sewing machine this way. So I'm going to be starting here at the top and going this way through. So you would find your quarter inch, which is about right there. And then you would mark it just like that. We're gonna go at an angle. So I marked that spot, right? And now we're gonna, we need to go at an angle this way. And we're going to go about, about three quarters of an inch. So from that edge right here, we're gonna mark here because that's three quarters. See, that's three quarters of the way down from that edge. So we're gonna mark that right there. And then if you line up that mark 
right there with that dot right there and you draw a line that's exactly the line that you're going to follow when you do your dart and you're going to back stitch and usually I don't back stitch on a dart but for a mask I haven't seen a reason why we why we can't and you can even clip that so you know where that is so I'm just folding that over toward like right sides together pinching it I'm going to be feeding it in the machine this way I'm setting my foot here and my needles on this side and I'm just going to be sewing down. First thing I'm going to do is mark a quarter inch in, and then I'm going down about three quarters of an inch. Depending on how round your face is, that would be a, an adjustment that you could make. You could go a little bit more hugging, or you can go less hugging of the chin area, and this would be the point where you would make that decision. So then I'm just gonna line that up point to point and mark it. All right, now we're gonna sew those darts up. You're gonna take a couple stitches and then you're going to back stitch and then you're gonna go forward again up to where that dot was, back stitch there, and then go ahead and release it. Okay, let's do the other side. So this is what you should end up with, something that looks just like this. See, the chin is nice and curved right there. That's exactly what we want. This is what the inside looks like. You have those two pieces of darts right there. And at this point, you could probably go ahead and try it on your face so that you can see if it needs to be tucked even more or whatnot. The next thing I want you to do is go ahead and zigzag the entire top area and then this entire bottom area too. It's up to you whether or not you would like to surge your project or you can go ahead and zigzag it like you see me do here. Either way, I'm okay with either one of them, but it's up to you really. So now we're gonna go ahead and do the zigzag over here. See how that sets up so nice? I mean, it's really amazing how it just domes out. So now what we're going to do is attach our nose piece to our mask. It's pretty easy on this one because this is the inside of the mask and we know these are the darts, so we know that that's the bottom of the mask. Find the center of the nose piece, which is about right there, and we'll go ahead and pop a clip right there. Now I also want you to notice here that I went ahead and I did end up surging the top and the bottom because I just wasn't liking what my zigzag looked like. So I had that other option, so I went ahead and I did that instead. We are going to take it over to our sewing machine with the cushion side facing us, not the wire side. We want the cushion side on our nose because the wire would be too hard on our nose. That would be uncomfortable. I'm gonna do a straight stitch right across there, connecting these two pieces together. But when I do that straight stitch, first I'm gonna start here and then I'm gonna go back, and then I'm gonna go down this side, and then I'm gonna go back up that way, go around, and go down this side, and back stitch there. 
You see, I don't want this to flip up. And if it was only connected just to the top, it may have a tendency to flip up. So I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna go ahead and put my zipper foot on for this one. There's my zipper foot right there. It just helps me get close in to the seam allowance without running over the wire that's in there. Okay, this is what you should have so far. And you see here how that's connected on the side? I actually didn't go down far enough on that one. I'll catch that later. Looking good. So our next step is to apply little sleeves, so to speak, on the sides, on the insides of each wing. So this is the inside of the mask, and so we are going to sew these in there. And I found this in my stash. Now I pot these, God only knows when, but they're vintage and they are iron on seam binding and I've never seen them before. I pulled it out and I tried it and it works amazingly for this project. Heat up your iron and we're going to make some sleeves. First off, it needs to be a little bit longer than the wing itself. So I'm just putting like a finger crease in there. See here, the glue? or I don't even know what this is. It's like a bonding type thing on this, down each side, down that side and down that side. When you heat that up, it bonds to the fabric. It's amazing, whatever it is, it's amazing. I'm gonna put that right like that, close to the top, but just enough where you can still see that white threading. And then over here, I'm going to just fold that like that. and you're just gonna lightly, I mean, this stuff sticks, no doubt. Turn it over. So when we go to feed our elastic in this new way that I've been doing my elastic, it's gonna go right down the center here because this is essentially, that's all open in there. We are gonna stitch these down. We're going to serge or zigzag the ends while grabbing that ribbon. So we're gonna do the same thing over here to this one. And you can do this with any ribbon, really. Take your cross grain ribbon and sew it down on both sides and you're done. Now that that's all tacked on, because that's not permanent, remember, that could still come off, so we need to sew that. I'm gonna sew a straight stitch right there. And I'm going to serge this end and this end, and I'll be right back. This is what you should have so far. The outside should look like this. There's that line of stitching. There's the other line of stitching. Here is the Comfort Elastic that I sell in my eBay store. It's the same stuff that they use in the hospital masks, the surgical masks. It doesn't break when pulled, and it just has a ton of stretch to it. Today I'm gonna to show you the new way that I've been attaching the elastic to all my masks. This is just a plastic weaving needle. And you just don't know how much elastic a person's gonna need. You can guesstimate on yourself, but you just never know, because everybody's different. So here what I'm doing is first, I'm weaving it through this way. So there's that part. So this is just one big piece of elastic right now. And we'll figure out the sizing here in a minute and I'll show you exactly how I do it. So we're going to weave two sides in and we're coming up from the bottom and going up that's important <laughs> now the first thing i want you to do before you even fit it on yourself or anybody else you're going to see this this is all like this it's all just hanging it's all just hanging here okay on the bottoms and then the tops are like this those are the ends what I want you to do is take this part right here, this loose edge, so it's coming through there. I want you to put it on the inside of the mask in the center of the mask. And then I want you to clip it. So that's the first thing you're gonna do. I want you to go and I want you to zigzag that right there. When you go to zigzag this on there, that elastic, do not come into this area. We need this to be free flowing at all times in that channel in order for it to be adjustable to everybody. So that piece is zigzagged in the center there. So I want you to watch something. See this, when I pull on this, you see how this gets smaller? That's what we want. If the wearer pulls on it and pulls on it and tugs on it, 
it's not going to get lost in there because see here it's connected there and we can just pull it back out like that that part is connected now we've got the rest of this to deal with so we're going to pull this up so i want you to just see how this all looks first so you kind of get an idea of what we're doing here you see here this is all connected before you come and loop this part and cut this and sew that in the center with the zigzag you're going to try this on and that's what i'm going to do right now okay, i hope i'm getting a good shot of this <laughs> essentially you're going to loop this on the wearer whoever you're making the mask for and you're going to put it first over their head like that around the back of their head so that that long piece that's connected to the bottoms right here is connected there and goes all the way around. That's connected and you pull this tight. Not so tight though, you know what I mean? Like you, you wanna be comfortable still. We're just trying to figure out the size right now. I'm putting it around the ear like that and somewhere around the middle there. And I'm trying to keep my hair up so you can see I should have put a clip in. So it's on there like that. So essentially, I think that that is going to be good for my size because once it's connected there, it should be good to go. So once you figure out that that's good to go, and as you can see, I mean, this mask is great. I have all this breathing room right here. It's amazing. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and hold this right there, and then I'm just gonna slip it off. This is how much I had back here. And then that's how much was on the ear loop. The, <laughs> that's how much was on the ear loop. I'm gonna do the same exact thing over here. I'm gonna take that loop right here. I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna, see it even matters which way this is facing, if you can believe it or not. I mean, it all matters. It's like ergonomics or something. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not a scientist or anything, but you can kind of figure it out if you think about it long enough. And I've thought about it long enough. <laughs> so go ahead and match it up to the other side and then zigzag that right there. So I went ahead and I put my hair up and I put the mask on to show you guys what it looks like with me talking and all that. So this is it. So you see here, this is coming out of the side loop right here, the side, the loop, and it comes around the ear, which is connected right here. And this is the bottom part that's coming out of the casing that in turn comes around the back of the neck, which is awesome because it pulls the mask this way so it doesn't want to ride up on you. And then of course it connects over here and it does the same exact thing coming out of the side area there and then looping around the front. Can I breathe in it? Yes, I can. Can I talk in it? Well, it's obvious that I can talk in it, right? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking. It really is an easy mask to make. In the end, you end up with this beautiful quilted mask that you can breathe through. It's made of polyester. It's one of the recommended materials to use in mask making. It's lightweight and you don't have to fuss with more than one piece of fabric. I really do like this mask. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of this mask. Until next time on the sewing channel, take care.